invalid. Massac looms. That's the headline that we're looking at. The Nigerian government has declared all degree certificates from Kotunu University in Benin Republic issued between 2017 and present as invalid, with potential mass sackings looming. The Minister of Education, Tahir Maman, announced this decision during a press conference in Abuja, emphasizing that employees with fake degrees from the republics of Bene and Togo will face termination. The Federal Executive Council, led by President Bola Tinubu, approved measures to identify and remove individuals with these invalid certificates from both public and private sectors, with the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and the Head of Service taxed with enforcement. Our guest this morning is Comrade Amechi Asugumi, former Deputy President of NLC, Industrial and Labor Relations Expert. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Welcome. I don't even know when, where we should start, whether it's from the labor angle where a lot of people will be sacked as a result of this, or the, the decision by the federal government or the Minister of Education to give a blanket um, uh, blanket kind of uh, uh, description to people who went to school in Kotono and Togo in, within a, a, a specified period of time. Let's, let's begin with that. Everybody yeah, that yeah, went I to school from 2017 to date in Bene and, and Togo uh, have been branded people who had fake certificates, more or less. And, uh, for sure. Uh, the issue of uh, fake certificates from the nation countries is not new to me. I have got that news before now, believing that the uh, government and the employers of labor will have a way of actually examining true certificates of uh, potential employees. Because uh, I also don't want uh, this uh, open approach to say 2017 to date. Because within this period, some people have also gone to school genuinely and legitimate certificate to obtain. So I believe that a thorough investigation, uh, a forensic or whatever method they use to examine that those that would definitely be affected will be those that actually perform those criminal acts. Because you say that have capacity to impersonate or forge certificates uh, just for the quest of getting employment cannot also be uh, a true servant in the, in the workplace. And uh, I don't think uh, anybody in the right sense will support criminal art. But the question is, it shouldn't also be used as a general approach to which aren't all workers, including the good ones that also have genuine certificates. I don't believe all schools in Kotono have fake results. And therefore, we are talking about people that procure their results. People who, who probably had gone to go to New Bene in order to pay money, certain amount of money, and they backdate uh, your certificate as though you were in that school. I think such schools, even in the African countries, should be petitioned in such that they don't exist. Because what are you teaching the student? What are you teaching the generation? That people can and what they are not, how do you perform in the workplace? But that goes to tell you how bad we, uh, how bad our economy also have uh, entertained some of these illegitimate and illegal proceedings. That somebody with fake certificate will be in employment for five, six, ten years, and uh, we are getting to begin to now look for them in 2024. So it, it, it means the person outside the certificate, but have acquired knowledge. Don't forget. A certificate is not just the reason for employment. Experience matters. So anybody in employment today, not all employers will obey the order, depending on who is affected. But there are some workers whom employers have found faithful and honest in their workplace, but eventually they are the ones affected. They either demote them, but they may not, they may not send them away. But my own is that the criminal aspect of the act is my focus. And as such, it doesn't matter the beauty of your performance. For you to have come in in that fraudulent manner, I believe whoever that is discovered in that manner should be taken, let go. Okay, there are, there, are, there are a lot of things that have come out of this, but let, let's begin with uh, uh, why single out only Bene and Togo? Because 
I know for a fact, all of us know that uh, when you're talking about fake certificates, it may not, okay, let me use me, it may not be just Togo and Bene. We've, we've seen people getting certificates from places, I don't know, some of them, they may not even be universities in that place, the Torontos, the, the whatever, and some of them even in, in, in politics, the greatest problem they have after election is certificate forgery. You are, you are this, you are that, and after a while it just dies down and all that. So why are they singling out just these countries just because maybe an investigative journalist went to that place, did what he did, and came out with a report? Why not just, if you have to make inquiries, we must to investigate, you investigate every uh, certificate, especially that comes out of Nigeria. Uh, maybe uh, I may not speak for government, but my my instinct tells me that the uh, government would have uh, focused on the most prominent uh, Bene has uh, this prominent uh, character of indulging in such a uh, fraudulent uh, behavior with regards to issuance of certificates. And I think uh, there are schools in Bene, particularly, that does this for a practice and. Uh, starting with Bene may not be an error because if we misfocus, it will also discourage uh, the good intent of uh, the honorable minister or even coming from the president of Nigeria. I just believe that when good steps are taken, we should commend and encourage it so that we discourage corrupt practices because corruption starts with uh, forgery of certificate, whether it's by politician by any worker. My, my, my appeal would be that such should extend to politicians. It should extend to employers also. People who definitely have acquired this very wrong approach of a securing certificate by fraud should be dealt with, not just removing from employment. They should be prosecuted. It's criminal. Mm. But what does that say about uh, our regard to certificates? It seems as if if you do not have a certificate, that's the mentality that we've, we've cultivated over the years. If you don't have a certificate or you don't have a degree, you are a nobody, no matter what kind of experience you have, no matter what you can do. Uh, so people are desperate about getting certificates. And uh, secondly, when you talk about forgery, people go extra length to make sure that they want to serve as NYSC uh, members and they falsify their age. People go the extra mile to falsify their age, do age declaration maybe every five years to make sure that they stay in service uh, and not retire at the age that they're supposed to retire, to the extent that some people become younger than the children that they had when they were young. So it's a multifaceted thing if we're talking about all this uh, corruption in, in, in terms of forgery. So when you're talking about education alone, what happens to other people who forge their way into authority, forge their way into employment without necessarily having to use, or force their way into staying in employment without necessarily being a degree? Yes, uh, before I go into this uh, multi, uh, approach to this forgery, I also want to correct that impression that not all employment requires certificates. And uh, it's unfortunate that in Nigeria, we pay more attention to certificate than uh, even knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that is why some, somebody who didn't go to school can present certificate that have gone to school and they accept it. Meaning, in knowledge-wise, they have acquired that knowledge for the job. But because there is a slight request of wanting to know whether you have BSc, whether you have HND, and these people are not going to the extent of... Uh, committing crime in getting those papers. So I want to believe that employers should also be encouraged to letting people get employment without certificates, even is high demand for pay, because everybody earn money according to the training they have acquired. Mm. And when you travel abroad to China, and all, they, nobody has certificates. They, they believe in training. Train me to employ me. That is what works in other countries. That is why people are not in the hurry. They are not a serious desire to learn English because they have their local language. So they learn manufacturing using their language. Communication becomes easy. But maybe that is for another day. For the, for the people who, who acquire this means of uh, securing uh, success, I believe that whether it's of certificate 
whether it's of age declaration, whether of any manipulation whatsoever, that anyone engaged in trying to... I, I, know, I know cases where people have to reduce their age. The way you reduce your age, naturally, that is a divine... A, that, is, that is a cost on your personality. In the quest of staying long in service, so you, somebody is already due for retirement, your children already know your age, they are scared to conduct your birthday celebration because they don't also want to put you in trouble in your place of work. It's criminal. It's criminal because lying on oath is criminal in Nigeria. So when people take up responsibility, take up job, take up appointments, and they put false information as a backup to the appointment, and then thereafter, we limit it to employees of 2017. No, it should be escalated so that everybody, people will start resigning. Those that don't want to be caught on the job, they resign willingly. You can't, you can't eat your cake and have it. You didn't go to school, you cannot end as though you went there. So that we also give validity to people who have also paid the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that we should actually uh, have cover for any of this shit because they represent the same image. It's wrong, it is wrong. Whether of age, whether of any information, people have forged not just certificates, documentation in, in, in terms of uh, work experience. You check the CV of somebody, you try to list out companies that he has worked, whereas he has not been there. We have seen cases like that in trying to check employment uh, for certain categories of people. In providing consultancy, we see that people who have actually show cause of their CV, well, you are never there. And they don't believe that CV has to be submitted and possibly uh, admitted without verification. But empl employers who actually make business will go extra mile to do random search on your CV information. And before you know it, you begin to discover that People who have said they have worked with XYZ organization, we are never known by this company. And once information is traced first, I will never trust any of the information you are giving me. Well, this table is already standing on one leg, <laughs> so I don't know, everything might just catch up. We know people who have been replaced in their workplaces, maybe because they became, uh, they, they left us and you just bring a brother that continues to bear that name or someone died somewhere and then you bring someone else from another person bearing that name and just continues from that uh, where the other person stops because there's there's no employment anywhere so we've seen a lot of these things and if each and everybody who has a little skeletal in the cupboard in, in terms of corruption or falsification of documents is uh, sacked i'm not sure how the <laughs> the labor market is going to look like anyway but let's digress a little bit as we wrap up uh, this segment with you uh, sir we're talking education and um, We've just uh, been told by the Minister of Education that before you can write WAEC or WASC or even JAM, you have to be 18. Otherwise, you will not get admission. You cannot write WAEC and then you will, will not get admission into any tertiary institution in Nigeria. Uh, what do you think about this new policy? Well, it's not a new policy. They say it's been there. But uh, the continuation or enforcement of this policy, what is your say? What is the age bracket you just mentioned? So I'm sure with that. 18, 18 years. You have to be 18 years before you can gain admission into any university. You have to be 18 years before you can write WAEC even. Uh, that's the new poli the policy that is going to be enforced. Uh, I think uh, the, the government needs to check the very policy uh, on the line because I agree when they said you need to be 16 years to get admission. That is why in trying to get a, a teenager who is set to be a youth before leaving the parents, because once you are out of the house to any university, uh, you are beginning to take responsibility as a child. But when you say a child has to be 18 years before he gets into university, you are also encroaching into the right of those children, because right to education is actually given to every child. And beyond right, right of time management is also to the children. And therefore, government cannot make policy that eventually bring 
uh, the preservation in knowledge to the children, I think uh, that should not be with good intention. Because if truly a child should be 18 before work, it means from your primary school, it would have been programmed that before you get to your SS3, you should be 18. Not when you are out of SS3 at 15, then you'll be at home for three years. That is not progressive policy. And I think government must retain because for any policy to tell a child to get into university at 18, such policy should command all the primary school that entrance to primary one must be seven years. And I don't think it's too progressive to hinder children who are smart in their tender age in whatever they want to become. A, a child should be, should be in the second year at 18. By 20, don't forget, life does not end in education. It's literally for me. After education, they start thinking of how to get married and settle down in life. So you don't make policy that eventually uh, destroy the plan of other children or children in that, in that regard in terms of their destiny. I believe such policy may not find popularity because every child has his dream. And people school abroad, people also uh, travel out of this country, private uh, universities, even when public school refused to take children at uh, 15, few years ago, private schools admitted them in the same country. So what kind of policy is that? So if this policy is going to work in Nigeria alone, and would, that, would they place a policy on your age, age limit before you can get a job? Because eventually these same people will travel out of the country to study and still come back and get a job while other people are still in school. So you are, you are more or less creating disparity and discrimination in one way or the other. We, can, we shouldn't set a policy that does not actually cover the interests of the children. That, that I, don't, I don't see the back reason to justify that policy. The policy for me is not progressive. If they want to use it as a way of uh, curtailing uh, employment, unemployment rate, it's also not a good one because in the long run, the steady unemployment rise will still continue. If you think that uh, people are coming out of school too early and they are, you are having many of them unemployed, and for that you need to keep people at home, the more you have the youth inactive, the more economy is actually losing its own strength. But these are the people who need to get employed. Some of these employers you see, employers of labor, they are looking for younger generation, people who are in their 20s. So when you put somebody to be 18 before getting to school, some people study six years in university. So they're already 25 before they're out of school, before they go to serve, before they start settling down to look for a job, they're already 30. So what kind of society are we building? I think we should advocate active youth, active knowledge. 16 years is enough to go into university. And I believe parents have been coaching their children who don't have cases of abuse that will necessitate such policy. Okay. Well, uh, thank you. It's a good way to drop it this morning. Thank you, Comrade Amechi Sugumi, for coming on the show this morning. Thank you, Gordon. Yeah. Have a nice day. We've been talking with Comrade Amechi Sugumi, former Deputy President of NLC and Industrial and Labor Relations expert. We were looking at uh, uh, the, the pronouncement by the federal government that the people who went to school or a tertiary institution or obtained degrees from 2017 till date from Bene and Togo uh, may have to be sacked from wherever they are working and uh, they are declaring their certificates as invalid. We'll see how that pans out in the coming days. Right now we'll take a very short break because our next guest is standing by to talk to us about the uh, strike of the uh, resident doctors in Nigeria. Stay with us. <laughs>